Dog pouch tonight. Stay with me. Ed order Galanda Hay, and the lady you see, Sour Desk Yatino, a hunt coast on Haye, Ul Haley, so that is Yatna, do your desk Yatni or his dog dinner, or Jaisa, a hunt alone. They will all spot the lovely desk Yatni said, Father, again, we thank you this evening for that you brought us together again. We just thank you, Lord, for many blessings that you bestowed upon this nation. We just ask that you be with each and every one that's in attendance today. Lord, there's many youth in attendance, Lord. I just ask that you would guide these young children in the past, Lord, as they're being leaders of our nation someday. <coughs> Lord, we thank you for what you have done for the Sequoia girls, Lord, that you was with them through, this, through the tournament, Lord. We just ask and thank you for the many blessings. And again, Father, we thank you in your name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Roll call vote, please. Here. Here. Father Collins. Here. Kara Callan. Ahani. Joe Kidman. Here. Mary Fraley. Here. Don Marvin. Don Duncan. Here. Wayne Johnson. Here. John Keener. Ahani. Linda O'Leary. Thank you, Martin. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. No motion made and seconded. All in favor, aye. aye. All opposed, no. Motion carries. Next item is the State of the Nation, delivered by the Principal Chief, Chad Smith. sister passed away at age 84, Bernice Myers of Sequoia County. She was a long-term, long-time educator. And Lucy West, one of our original enrollees, passed away recently. I believe she was from Briartown of Florida. So if you will, just share with me and take this moment in the silence to acknowledge and to commemorate her passing. It is my honor to appear in front of you to express the state of the Cherokee Nation. It's been my honor to do it several times. But I think tonight is pretty special. I don't know if any council meeting we've had during my term where there's more optimism, positive uh, accomplishments, and acknowledgments to be made. Tonight is going to be a very rich evening that I think everybody will share. The enthusiasm of the accomplishments of many of our Cherokee citizens. Let me first talk about service and program updates. The Cherokee Nation's Geographic Information System Department hosted a mapping conference last week and had 150 attendees. The conference assisted all tribes with informational gathering and data, and included trainers from Alaska and Hawaii. Mapping methods have been used within tribes for everything from analyzing data to support a uh, compact agreement to monitoring geographic patterns of disease such as diabetes and cancer. We also need to give our legal department a great kudos for winning in the U.S. Supreme Court our case against Indian Health Service and the BIA for contract support costs. 
And Meredith Fraley and I had the opportunity to sit in front of that bench some months ago in the awe of that great court. And we had, and if I can have the indulgence, we were sitting as far as we are away today from the court. And over the course of that argument, which was very disturbing, we could see the personalities of each of those Supreme Court justices. It wasn't high academic it was people making decisions about the Cherokee Nation. And when we left there, I never thought that we would have won a unanimous decision in the Supreme Court. And basically, the long and short of that decision was is that our Indian contracts should be acknowledged similarly to non-Indian military procurement contracts. Besides that, we got some money. We won $8.5 million, plus interest in the damages. <coughs> Cherokee Nation's car tag revenues enabled us to distribute more than $2.5 million to area schools at an economic summit we held last month. The tribe distributes 38% of our tag revenues to area schools, and I want to thank all the council for being there at that summit to help us deliver those uh, payments. <coughs> In our Human Services Department Elder Program is planning a elder powwow on Saturday, April 30th at the Cherokee Nation Cultural Grounds. The powwow will help raise funds for an elder conference in May or June. Our JOM program has been very busy in uh, hosting the Challenge Bowl competitions since February 1st. Our administrators have stated that students competing this year were more knowledgeable than ever before. In fact, the finals, the finals for the 6th to 8th grades, those top five teams out of, I think, 50-something teams, actually held their finals here in this chamber and was televised via the Internet. The Cherokee Challenge Bowl teams placing first through third this year for each division are as follows. Uh, Osage in the K through second grade, Osage, Gore, and Marietta. And I think Phyllis Yargy may have had something to do with the participants from Gore winning second. Division two, third through fifth grade, Osage, Gore, and Marietta. And I think you had something to do with Gore. Congratulations. Division three, sixth through eighth grade, Gore. <laughs> Grove, Dean Griggs, so Mr. Archie again was coaching our young Cherokee children well. The 9th through 12th grade, we had Grove, Sequoia, Tahlequah, and Fort Gibson. We'll have our spring JOM awards lunch and honoring the Cherokee Challenge Bowl and JOM Creative Writing Contest winners and participants on April 14th at the Tulsa Marriott Southern Hills. The Cherokee Nation Vocational Rehabilitation Department is going to host a Disability Awareness Day this Thursday, March 17th, here at the main complex. Registration begins at 8.30. The event call begins at 9 and ends at noon. For information, uh, please call 1-800-256-4415. Uh, Cherokee Nation is celebrating Arbor Day on March 24th. Hunting, fishing, and tending the land is a part of Cherokee heritage. This event helps celebrate that heritage. Our Arbor Day event is called Get Out the Trees. It will be held at the main compact complex uh, at our Natural Resources Department. They will be giving away free seedlings to the public. Our employees will join in plant trees and native plants around our pond area and invite our council members to join us. For more information, call our Natural Resources, Environmental, or Communications Department. Now I'm very excited to announce that Sequoia High School basketball team came back from Oklahoma City real winners. took second place in the state competition and the girls team took first place and now are the Oklahoma State champions in their class. Congratulations to both teams 
The boys' team had another engagement tonight, but the girls' team was with us. Uh, the girls swept the playoffs, winning all three games. And I tell you, when I talk about them being winners, both the boys and girls, it's just not on the court, but it's off the court. We embrace sports as a Cherokee Nation because it's a laboratory in leadership. I'm ever proud of our youth because they were magnanimous winners and gracious losers. Every time they took a step on behalf of the Sephora and the Cherokee Nation, they were greatest ambassadors, showing the highest statesmanship, sportsmanship, and class. And that is why I'm so appreciative of our coaches, our staff, our council, our administration for creating this environment where they can thrive. So to each of you athletes and staff and coaches tonight, I want to thank you on behalf of the Cherokee Nation for the great honor that you've bestowed upon us. And it's just some small token of our expression, we'd like to ask you to come forward and give you certificates of our appreciation and perhaps show off that gold ball just a little bit. <laughs> If you'll come forward and just line up across the front. Angel <coughs> Goodrich. Coach, to say a word, but 
before I do that, could everybody raise their hand and we'll be back next year. Thank you, Chief. Uh, first off, thank you to everyone uh, that supports our programs, both boys and girls. Because, and I told people right after we won outside our locker room, there was about six or, six or so hundred of you that were there, that uh, it's hard for anyone else to understand that you go on the road and you have home games. Uh, the support here is unlike any other school I've ever been at. It is unlike any other place in the state. And we owe the fans, uh, you have a big piece of that gold ball. Uh, thank you for your support. Thank you to our administrators, our staff, uh, who we owe a huge amount of debt to uh, for their support during the entire year. Uh, I'd like to say congratulations to our seniors. Um, they have accepted the challenges put before them and have responded like champions. They have led the way for our magnificent freshman class. You know who's coming back. And we are already thinking about next year to see if we can't get a book in for uh, this one gold ball we already have. Uh, I'd just like to say that uh, the one thing that I'm most proud of, and Chief Smith hit on that, earlier was that the kids are the champions in Class 3A basketball. That is a fact. And they earned that on the floor. But more importantly for us, we understand uh, in the girls basketball program at Sequoia that our kids are the marquee of the school. They are out front of the public and what the public sees in our basketball team is what they perceive of our school. And our kids are a magnificent marquee for Sequoia High School and Cherokee Nation. They are young women and they know how to act with integrity and character. They are wonderful winners and they are gracious losers. Fortunately, we didn't have to practice our graciousness very often. <laughs> it's just too often. But uh, again, I'd like to say thank you and on behalf of the Sequoia Girls basketball team, Next week, next Monday, we'll be presenting to both Cherokee Nation and our Superintendent Gene Stanley the 2005 3A Class Championship Gold Ball. Thank you very much. Gina, will you come down for a picture, please? Our Superintendent Gina, would you come down for a picture? Can you all scratch up so we can get everybody a picture? You may have to do two rounds. <laughs> 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 Give them a round of applause. Council, I'll be coming to you with a budget modification for a whole bunch of uh, state championship rings in this next one. <laughs> 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 this one. Every month we proudly honor Cherokees in the military service. And Joe, if you'll come down and help us. Tonight we honor, as a rare opportunity, to honor five brothers, all members of the Welsh family. They have all served in the military to defend this country and our nation. Let me list their names and their service, then we'll ask them to come down. 
Key Welch from Hulbert entered the Army Reserves in 1959. Noah Welch from Lake Kinko went into the Army in 1966 and served in Vietnam, the 35th Combat Engineers. Charlie Welch from Hulbert, CPL, served in U.S. Marines Corps Infantry. He also went to Vietnam in 1966. Charlie rejoined the Army National Guard in 1982 and served in the 120th Engineers Battalion, retiring in 1999. Spade Welch from Hulbert joined the Army in 1980 and served with the HHC 177th Armored Division at Fort Carson, Colorado. Spade then served in the Marine Corps from 1983 to 1986. Next, he served with the Oklahoma National Guard. 120th Engineer Battalion from 1988 to 2004. Spade moved to serve with the 130th Engineering Battalion here in Operation Iraqi Freedom from 2003 to 2004. Jimmy Welch, also of Halbert, served with the 197th Infantry Unit and in Vietnam from 1969 to 1970. Will you join me? and acknowledging our appreciation to these fine gentlemen who have been our country and nation. choice, you know, we sometimes, you know, we, they had that draft, and, and uh, so we took your fiscal, and if you passed your fiscal, well, you went in, you know, and, and well, there's four of left, and they told me to go home, and I was kind of, I was sick, and, you know, and then later on, in 59, late 59, I, I joined the reserves, you know, and, and stayed in it until 65, and then, we we wasn't all in the same time. They just took us one at a time, and you know, one come home, and they take another one, and till all five of us, you know, been in service. But you know, I'm glad they returned, you know, and, and I was glad for them. And uh, they went through the worst part of it, you know. They went through Vietnam, and, and uh, Spain went to Iraq, and, and uh, you know, well, you could. They told some. Some uh, good stories while they was over there, you know. They how they had a narrow escape, and you know. And I, myself, I think the good Lord was watching over them, you know. And our mothers, well, my, our mother, she she went to uh, she went to church, and my grandpa, and she they prayed for us, and you know, and and uh, and uh, in the church where we went, they put uh, flags on the, on the wall up there. And each one that returned, they took a flag down, you know, and uh, and finally, the, all the flags were down, you know, after we returned, and 
And, uh, well, the only one that got uh, wounded was Charlie. And uh, Nora got pretty close. And uh, he got peppered a little bit, I think, you know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, Jimmy, he, he had a, a close call, he said, you know. And, uh, and uh, well, I just... I just want to thank you know, I don't know, I just, I just want, you know, when they call you, I guess, you just have to go, you know, I didn't try to get out of it or anything, you know, I just went, you know, I guess that's the way all of us were, you know, we just went, and of course, it's part of duty, I guess, I, at the time, I didn't think about it, it was, you know, it was our duty, but we just went when, when they called us, and, uh, well, I'm glad we're all here, you know, that's the only thing I can say, <laughs> you know. to come down with our next presentation. For active service honorees tonight, we are recognizing Cherokee Nation Enterprises employee, Sergeant Anthony Tiger. And David is going to make that presentation. Is Anthony here? <clears throat> Anthony most recently served in the 120th Engineering Battalion as Specialist 4 for combat heavy equipment operator. He just returned from Iraq. Please join us in honoring Anthony Tiger. been waiting for for a long time. I'm glad that uh, we talked about the uh, flags hanging in the church. For almost over a year, we've had five flags hanging in our lobby. Joe, I have them here. We hung a blue star flag for each of our employees uh, who was in Iraq with the 120th Battalion. At least three of them join us tonight. John Ketcher, Shauna Eubanks, and Anthony Tyler. You guys are so glad. say a few words. Uh, I was in July and uh, I said I'd bring this flag back with me. This flag uh, stayed with me my entire time in Iraq. You still got the Iraqi dirt on. <laughs> every truck I climbed on, every helicopter I got aboard, this was with me. And uh, we had, Shauna was in Fallujah, and we had another of our outfit in uh, Ramadi, and then I was in Al-Assad and Takeda. And this flag, I got volunteered, because I didn't know how I was going to get to Fallujah, which is Ramadi, where they were at. I got volunteered to go on a security convoy where I got to be a machine gunner on a Hummer. And so uh, we made this big loop through Ramadi and up through uh, Fallujah and everything. But every time we stopped, I pulled this thing out and I'd unfurled. So it was unfurled at Fallujah and Ramadi. And then also back at Takeda and al Assad. And uh, so I'm going to present this to our chief of the Cherokee Nation. Thank you. 
Feels good to be home. <laughs> Thank you very much. This, this is a day we've been looking forward to. And Sean had the opportunity to be at our Cherokee National Holiday. And if you were there, you heard her speak at the closing of that ceremony admonishing us to enjoy each day and each person because they were so precious when you compared our lives here with what was those people in the rock had. So thank you so much. This was also the first time that the Cherokee Nation flag has flown in the combat zone. And we didn't know John was flying this to Sean until we got this picture. So this is actually, is this the same flag? Same flag. We're going to put this up out in the hall. We have community meetings to, to announce tonight. I believe uh, Linda O'Leary and Melvin Schaubhout will have one in Delaware County on March 17th at 7 p.m. at the Northeast Technology Center in Athens. Excuse me, Chief. That's a mix-up. That was, we had one on the 10th at the Athens Voltec, but no, uh, March 29th at the Jay Community Center. March 29th at the uh, Jay Community Center. Okay, good. Mm-hmm. And then Councilman Don Garvin is hosting a community meeting, and maybe you ought to tell us side of it. <laughs> It's tomorrow night in Borum, and uh, you're all invited. I don't know if we'd have room for you, but you're still invited. <laughs> <right. laughs> it's been a great evening. Thank you for the privilege of addressing you on such a group. Uh, an event where not only the old and the young are honored, but the patriots and warriors of our church nation are coming. We're done. Thank you, Chief Smith. Mr. Next item is action of unfinished business. Mr. President. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to um, request to amend the agenda to include under new business three items. Uh, you have those in front of you here that our legislative aid passed out to us. Now, as item number 15 is a resolution establishing procedures for procurement of legal services. That was just in, inadvertently omitted from the agenda. And the next two items, there's a time element involved, like the uh, item 16 is a resolution authorizing the submission of a proposal to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, I think, Ms. Yargi, you're going to present that, correct? And then item 17 is a resolution authorizing um, the submission of the Cherokee Nation Indian Reservation Roads Inventory Update to the Bureau of Indian Affairs. And Mr. Martin, you're going to present that, correct? I would move that we amend the agenda to include these three items under new business. Add as a standing agenda item under committee reports for Cherokee Nation businesses in June Carrington report. I accept that. Thank you. Is that resolution 18? Reports, committee reports to add chair of nation businesses and reporting would be CEO uh, Jim Carrington. Okay. And that is a standing business item, so it would need to be on every agenda. Ms. Fraley, who was uh, presenting number 15? I will. Motion been made. Has the motion been seconded? Motion seconded. All in favor, aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Okay, that was item 15, 16, and 17. Okay, and these were all resolutions? Yes, sir. Action of unfinished business. I see there's none pending, but I have a item under it. Yes, I'll take that to you, Mom. Okay. 
<clears throat> Last month, the Tribal Council passed legislation covering back pay and benefits for aggrieved employees who were terminated and then appealed and were successful in their appeal. Uh, the legislation was vetoed because of its contradictory nature and, and it also subjects corporate employees to the same uh, procedures and process as government employees. Uh, since the intent of the Tribal Council was to establish an appeal process for all employees, <clears throat> and since the nature of the businesses are somewhat different, uh, Mr. Hembry, our attorney, has drafted separate legislation for both types of employees, and you have those in front of you here also. Um, I hesitate to approve these two pieces of legislation as presented. Uh, for instance, does the definition of employee include temporary employees or employees under contract, etc.? cetera? Um, therefore, I would move to remand uh, these two pieces of legislation to the Rules Committee for further clarification, and I believe it needs more in-depth analysis. Motion is made, second. Any questions or discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Motion passed. Okay, now we move on to committee reports. Are there any reports from the Tribal Council? Any reports? All right, no reports. Now we go to the monthly reports. The Housing Authority, presented by Mr. David Sutherland. Good evening. I have a brief report this evening. Our regular board meeting for March is tomorrow evening at 5.30. It's at the Aline Hogner Conference Room at the Administration Building at 5.30. Uh, we have a light agenda with a few policy issues to discuss. One of those items concerns merit and cost of living increases. We've always addressed those items in February and March each year with Im implementation in April. It will be a tough decision for the board because of the uncertainty in funding for 2006. We had a special board meeting last Tuesday evening. We provided some training for our new board members. I'd like to think it went well since I did the training. Uh, but I think it did. They seemed to be okay with it. Uh, the budgeting for the 2005 Indian Housing Block Grant funds will begin this week. Housing Authority staff will be meeting with Cherokee Nation staff to discuss the implement implementation of the new housing philosophy. We will be discussing the use of a case management approach for home ownership. Our purpose for these meetings will be to develop policy and work out the details on implementation. We will be having additional meetings in the near future to talk about other aspects of the block grant, namely rehab. Um, I expect those in the next two or three weeks. Um, that's my report for this evening. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer. Any questions? Go on. They look nice. Yeah, I've seen those two. They're they're real nice. We could ever get the weather to cooperate and finish the yards up. Yeah, I went into one of them. That's a nice, nice house. Mr. Thornton, David, uh, how long has it been since the Housing Authority employees have received an increase in pay? Last year at this time. Last year. <coughs> We'd uh, skipped a year. And then we got one last year, and then it's, it's time to do it again. I knew you were going to ask that you didn't. Yeah. I didn't know about last year. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Thank you, David. Thank you. Next item is Cherokee Nation Enterprises. Mr. David Stewart. Good evening. Uh, Chief Smith and Council, uh, we are, we do have a lot of winners here tonight and also winners in our business units. 
uh, CNE continues to have very positive results. Our income is up approximately 25% across the board from last year. Our dividend is up to approximately a million dollars a month, and we expect that to increase uh, throughout the year, so they're doing a great job. Our employee count, as I said, is 2,300. Total Native American employment at Tahlequah is 93%. <coughs> Cherokee employment is 78%. At Roland, 78% total and 77% Cherokee. West Siloam is 84% total Native American and 72% Cherokee. And Catoosa is 61% total and 45% Cherokee. We continue to work to improve those employment numbers and higher Cherokees, so our policies are in place to do that, and we expect that to increase. We're continuing to look at our expansion opportunities at the various casinos, and you will see us um, in the design phase at West Siloam, Roland, uh, as well as the second phase in Catoosa. Uh, we're having great results with our management team, and I think we have a lot of opportunity at those casinos. So you'll be seeing that uh, as, we, as we roll out throughout the year. Tahlequah will be starting very soon, construction. We will break ground in the next 30 to 60 days, and Salisaw will be right behind. Uh, that's uh, my report. Uh, Glad to answer any questions you might have about what we're doing. Any questions? <coughs> any questions? Okay. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Next is Cherokee Nation Industries, Mr. Jim Majewski. Good, e <coughs> Good evening, Principal Chief Smith, Deputy Chief, Chief Grayson, and members of the Council. Uh, Cherokee Nation industry sales for the month of February were just slightly less than $7 million. Uh, CNI sales for the first seven months of 2005 were close to $54 million. Uh, profitability for the month was slightly greater than 500000 with the profitability for the year being around $2 million for the first seven months. Um, according to our budget, we're somewhat behind in shipments and a little bit ahead in the profitability. Our next board meeting is scheduled for March 30th at 9.30 a.m. in Stillwell. This concludes my report. Any questions or discussion? Any questions or discussion? Thank you, Jim. Well, you guys are in a good mood. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Jim Next, Carrington. we have Mr. Jim Carrington, Cherokee Thank Nation you. Business. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm extremely proud to be here. Uh, I continue to be impressed with uh, Mr. Stewart's percentage of hiring Cherokees. Uh, however, Cherokee Nation Businesses has one employee. That's me. So we have 100% Cherokee employment. <laughs> uh, as a lot of you already know, Cherokee Nation Businesses was formed in June of last year, and our main mission is to help diversify the business interests of the Cherokee Nation. Uh, I hope to have a lot more to report as the years go by. In that regard, we have uh, one business related report on right now. That's uh, Cherokee Nation, I'm sorry, Cherokee Connects. Uh, we own 51% of that. That's a company in Tulsa that uh, provides wireless internet access. And I'm proud to say they are up and running. They began providing services in December. They have a handful of uh, customers already, and we're looking forward to uh, some great growth in the future. Um, at that point, that's really my report. I'll be glad to answer any questions, and uh, I'll be glad to uh, continue to give you more details as we go forward. Any questions? I have one. Sure. What's the status on the call center uh, in Muskogee? Yeah, the call center actually is a uh, – we, we actually see that as having uh, folded under uh, Cherokee Connects as well. That is, an, that is a service that uh, Cherokee Connects can offer. They have a uh, teaming agreement with the Creek Nation, so we can go look for government contracts. We have yet to uh, be able to pull any contracts through that uh, teaming arrangement, although that is certainly something that's very high on our, uh, our, our list because that is a ripe opportunity that we hope to take advantage of real soon. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Jim. Right, thank you for having me. Mr. Garvey. Mr. President, in June, uh, 
there's a condition here that uh, you can't be in two places at one time, and uh, the National Congress of American Indians are having their meeting in I think it's June the 12th through the 16th, and our council meeting, I believe, is on the 13th. So uh, <coughs> most of the council wants to go, so I'm going to make a motion we change our June meeting to the 20th of June, 6 p.m. Uh, I make a motion that be changed to June the 20th. Motion made second. Any questions or discussion? Mr. President. Sir. Mr. Garvin, does your motion also include moving our standing committees to that week also? Uh, if it's proper, I would say so, but I, I think each committee would need to do that on their own. Uh, but I think it would be wise to move those to the following week also. So if you want to make that a, amendment, I'd sure accept it. Well, perhaps that's something we can discuss this week in our committees, and uh, if we need to move them, we will. I think you'll almost have to be moved. Thank you. Bad, I don't really know for sure. As individuals, most of us are. Uh, <coughs> uh, any other questions? <coughs> any other questions? The question was to move the council meeting to the 20th. Is that correct? That's correct. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, no. <clears throat> Motion carried. Meeting's been changed to the 20th of March. At uh, the usual time, 6 o'clock? Yeah. April, April 20th, I'm sorry. June. June. I'm getting ahead of myself here. <laughs> Mr. President, it's June the 20th, 6 p.m. June the 20th? Sure. 6 p.m. Now we move on to new business. First item is confirmation <coughs> of language, history, and culture of committee members. Councilman Angler. Uh, Keener, I'm sorry. Mr. Mr. Keener is the chair. Confirmation of the language and history and culture of committee members. Councilman England, Angle, England, and Councilman Garvin. I'll get you right in a minute, it's real. Second. Motion is made seconded. Right are, there any, here. are there any questions or discussion? All questions. Okay. All in favor, aye. aye. All opposed, no. Motion passed. <laughs> Item number two is a confirmation of employment committee members. Council member Connor, Mr. Baker, are you taking your place? Uh, England. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. I would move that we would add Councilman Martin and Councilman Garland to the appointment. Second. Motion to bank second. Any questions or discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Motion carried. <coughs> Item number three is a resolution authorizing Department of uh, Children, Youth, and Family Services to submit an application for transitional living services. Councilman Stockton. And this is submitted as a continuation grant for the fourth year of five-year federal grant application with the U.S. Family and Youth Services Bureau Runaway and Homeless Youth Program for a yearly amount of 150000 If funding the available date will be April 1, 2005, and there is a matching requirement of 10%, which will be proposed as in-kind in the application. Now put that in point motion. Second. second. Motion made seconded. Any questions or discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. All opposed, no. <coughs> Motion passed. <coughs> Item number four is an act amending Legislative Act 3704. Uh, Bill, are you taking me this place? Councilman Baker. Yes, uh, this authorizes the comprehensive budget for fiscal year 05 and mod 6 and declare it an emergency. 
The purpose of this amendment is to authorize and approve the use of funds subject to the availability of such funds in accordance with Section 4, change the certain <coughs> call centers approved in the Comprehensive Budget uh, Act of Fiscal Year 05 and with subsequent amendments. The cumulative uh, total of the budget is increased by $1,307,754 for a total budget authority of $307,083,373. Uh, and I will move, uh, put this in form of a motion for approval. Motion made and seconded. Any questions or discussion? Roll call vote, please. Yes. Yes. Resolution authorizing a grant application for funding for the Department of Childhood Lead Poisoning Prevention Outreach Program. Councilman Martin. Thank you, Mr. President. This grant application is for funding for the development of a childhood lead poisoning prevention outreach program and offers environmental protection. The program will concentrate lead hazard outreach activities on families with young children in areas that are determined to be of high risk previous <coughs> OEP lead based paint uh, inspection. Uh, grant application is for uh, $54,798 and I would move for approval. Motion is made seconded. Any questions or discussion? Motion. Go on. Motion is Call for the question. All those in favor, aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. Motion carried. Item six is a resolution confirming nomination of Jeff Limor as a board member. Councilman Fraley. Uh, Jeff, Jeff Limor has been nominated by the principal chief as a member of the Cherokee Nation Sequoia High School Board of Education. And he, Mr. Limor has a vast amount of experience in educational leadership and currently is the superintendent and principal of Delano East Public Schools. I would move to approve Mr. Limor. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Mr. President, we have the one that's here. Okay. <coughs> so I'm going to stand up, please. <laughs> we haven't got you yet, but just wait a few minutes, sir. <laughs> Motion is made and seconded. Any questions or discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Motion carried. Thank you, Ms. Flymore. Item seven is confirmation of election commission. Fifth board member, Ms. Fraley. There are five members of the election commission. Two are appointed by the chief, two are appointed and approved by the council. Two are appointed by the approved and confirmed by the council. And then those four elect the fifth commissioner. <clears throat> Each of these commissioners must take an oath of office. Two of the commissioners have not taken their oath of office yet. <clears throat> And I would move that we table the confirmation of this fifth member uh, at this time until those two officers are um, confirmed under oath. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Any questions or discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Motion carried. <laughs> Item number eight is a resolution confirming the nomination of Adolf Leichtenberger. Ms. Fraley. Uh, Mr. Lechtenberger has been nominated by the principal chief as a member of the Cherokee Nation Business Board. Um, I noticed in the confirmation paragraph on the resolution in front of you that uh, he's confirmed as a board member of Cherokee Nation Enterprises. Uh, I believe this needs to be corrected to read Cherokee Nation Business Board as it was presented and approved in the Rules Committee. So with this correction, I would move to confirm this nomination. Motion made and seconded. Any questions or discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. All opposed, no. 
Motion carried. <coughs> Item number nine is an act relating to the Cherokee Nation Employee Termination Appeals. Ms. Fraley. Uh, Mr. President, we, this is one of the acts that we are that we re remanded back to okay. the study the committee. <coughs> Can we move on to item number 10, an act relating to and amending Title 10? Ms. Fraley. Um, this amendment provides a procedure for the Cherokee courts to determine paternity of a child. A uh, complaint is made in writing to the district court, and then the district court has jurisdiction is a, if the father is a citizen of the Cherokee Nation, or in the case of a non-member Indian or a non-member, if that person resi resides within the territorial boundaries of the Cherokee Nation. And the proceeding is brought by the Child Enforcement uh, Support Enforcement Division, and I would move for approval. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Roll call vote, please. Bill <coughs> England? Yes. Bill John Baker? Yes. Honor Carter? Carroll Yes. Bill Yes. John Marvin? Yes. Charles Hopkins? Yes. William Johnson? Yes. John Keenan? Yes. Lindo Leary? Jacob O'Martin? Yes. Rabbi Shortown? Yes. David Thornton? Yes. Bill Chiarchi? Yes. Vote is unanimous. The act passed. Mm -hmm. Item number 11 is an act relating to the amending Title 43 of the Cherokee Nation Code. Ms. Fraley. Uh, this amendment creates uh, an Office of Child Support Enforcement within our Department of, Just of Justice. It also establishes procedures for the enforcement of child support orders. And I'd move for approval. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Any questions or discussion? Roll call vote, please. Yes. David Gordon? Yes. Jacob Martin? Yes. Kendall Leary? Yes. Yes. Johnson? Yes. Charles Hopkins? Yes. 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 Yes.
not because they don't deserve anything, but I just I think that, that uh, underpaying them is wrong. And so just, I don't want it to be noticed that that's why I'm looking at it. Mr. Hoskin. Mr. President, I have some questions about the funding uh, for the attorney uh, payment. Uh, Melanie, could you maybe help me out? Do you know the current status of the almost $10 million uh, that Congress has appropriated for the Cherokee Nation? Do you know if it's been placed in a trust fund bearing interest or what the status is? Yes, I'll report on the status. In 2004, uh, the Cherokee Nation received the first installment of $5 million uh, that has been placed in a trust account. Just recently, about January of this year, the second installment was received for fiscal year 05 that was appropriated and that also has been deposited into the trust account. The way all of the uh, resolutions are styled that we brought before you, it would uh, pay those attorney fees that you approve uh, on a pro rata basis based on the amount that we received uh, from those appropriations. Okay, so as of this day, no money has been paid out of that to any law firms that created That's right. That's right. The, the three other resolutions that have been passed by the council have been submitted to the Bureau uh, to start reviewing those, but they've not approved any payments this far. What is the process for the tribe to actually receive the fines, and then in turn, can we start to appropriate them? Is there... Go ahead. Uh, as uh, soon as those hit the trust account, uh, what the Bureau has to approve every payment that comes out of those funds because they're trust funds and they're still the trustee. And so what the process becomes is that when the nation approves a budget to expend them, that we send that budget, uh, uh, that legislation to the Bureau, um, along with the drawdown request to draw those funds down. Uh, they have to review that, approve that, and it gets sent to Albuquerque for actual disbursement to the nation, and then those funds are paid to the nation. Um, in, they will look at any legislative act or tribal law, other tribal law that uh, governs the use of those funds, and, uh, of course, you all have, a, have passed in such an act uh, governing the use of those funds, so they would look at that to make sure it's in compliance with that. Yes, on a timeline as far as when that will I don't know if I have a good estimate for that. Um, uh, it may be that I need to refer to Callie in terms of what it typically takes for, because we draw down some trust funds each year uh, in support of the general budget. <laughs> But uh, it usually takes some time, and I'd say a matter of more than months, more so than weeks. So, uh, Have we received or at least asked for a release from any of these firms for payments uh, that we've approved? Do you know of? I don't know of any. Um, and that doesn't mean that there isn't one. I just don't know of one. Uh, that may be a question better suited for our general counsel. No, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, uh, I agree with, with Mr. Baker, and, it's, and I appreciate the time the council has taken over this issue because we're talking about Cherokee people's money, and it's extremely important. But we're also talking about the reputation of the Cherokee Nation. And the original bill uh, from the attorney firm that we're addressing tonight, Patton and Boggs, is for uh, in excess of $1.4 million, which is a tremendous amount. Uh, our counsel for the, uh, our attorney for the council, Mr. Hembry, he's recommended in excess of $900,000 as a fair settlement. And tonight we're addressing a settlement of $151,000. The question of fairness and the question of the respect of the Cherokee Nation, uh, I can't support this. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Thornton, do you have any questions? I, I just want to ask Melanie, what was the uh, total funding? What was the total appropriation of that settlement for, for uh, the Cherokee Nation? The total was uh, $40 million for the entire settlement for all, all of the tribes, and 50% of that is Cherokee Nation, so $20 million for Cherokee Nation to be paid over four years. Four year plan? We have had extensive debate uh, on this in committee meetings, but uh, many of you were not there. So I'd like uh, a moment for the other part of the story to be heard. So I appreciate this is the Cherokee Nation money. I mean, this is your money. And Congress, when they set aside this uh, by law, 
said that we could only take up to 50% or 2 million of our pot of money to pay any lawyers in order to protect the tribe and the people. So in this settlement, we have appropriated the three other law firms money because they were not paid prior to this. However, in the case of Pat and Boggs, um, they did not work on the case for the Cherokee people for I think approximately seven years. And prior to that, they had been paid under their contract approximately $450,000 already towards that bill. Then, uh, because of different reasons, uh, they were not active on the case, and uh, in my mind, they abandoned the contract. Uh, and then, in this $151,000 that we are saying that we are going to allocate to them today as payment, we are paying them for the one phone call they have made in the last seven years in order to um, be any participant in Arkansas Riverbed settlement for the Cherokee Nation. So unlike my colleagues, I do see this as a very fair settlement and we are taking the Cherokee people's money and doing the best we can to compensate all the law firms that have been involved in the many years that this case has been going on. But there is another side to this story and this, um, some of this information is available through the Freedom of Information Act. Um, if, if it's very important to you that you understand how this issue was decided, know that each of us at this table read a lot of documentation in order to come to our votes today, and I think that's very important. They have been compensated, and we're going to finish that compensation out, but no one needs to act like they haven't been paid because these people have been paid out of your money and appropriately. Thank you, Mr. President. Any other questions or discussion? President, I'd like to add to the councilman, or councilwoman, Cal's comment. <clears throat> uh, when I looked at this legislation and, and looked at the different amounts being proposed by the administration to cover the cost of this, I was reminded that the Cherokee people have seven or eight attorneys employed in the Cherokee Nation. And I too was concerned about the Cherokee people's money. And I was looking at these attorneys that do the work for the Cherokee people every day. And this was their recommendation, as we have right here. So with that, I support this. Uh, I'm going to lose the vote, so I don't know that a, a lot needs to be said. Uh, I do know that the general counsel's recommendation gave a $100,000 bonus to one attorney, and we're going to turn around and, and stiff a law firm that, in all actuality, had they not made the one phone call, it, it, it would have been blocked in Congress. And that one phone call, and it was their original lawsuit that won the $20 million. And to, uh, to give them 150, and, and they were paid, uh, 400,000. But they also got this Mantiller Clinic. They got the, the Redbird Smith Clinic while they were working for us. And, uh, and Wilma Van Keller called them and says, hey, we're on, we're on High Center and we need you to come back. And folks, they were, they're an attorney firm that they contracted with the Cherokee Nation on a contingency basis. Folks, when you win, when you settle, you pay. That's all I'll say. Thank you. Mr. President. Let's go. Thank you. Um, I feel a big need to answer some of those um, suggestions because the documentation that I read showed that Patton and Boggs was compensated under a separate contract for those lobbying efforts for the Mancular Clinic and other things. So we need to separate those issues that is separate from what we're voting on today that does not have anything to do with Arkansas Riverbed Settlement and how we should be compensating this law firm. So I appreciate the work that Patton and Boggs did for those things that we received. However, they have been duly compensated under a separate contract, and I hate the suggestion that we didn't do that. Uh, the Cherokee Nation does honor our contracts. 
there were multiple contracts involved here. In fact, two of the contracts um, were very similar, similar um, in the 10% contingency fees and such. Um, but one of them stayed with us and saw us all the way through uh, to make sure that we received our proper settlement as a tribe. Um, and Pat and Boggs did not for various reasons. So I hate the idea that we'd be left with the idea that the nation did not act properly, but I strongly believe that we have acted uh, with good faith and executed our contracts as a business and, and how we should. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President. Question's been called. Sorry. Sorry. Mr. President, as a member of this council, I request roll call. Sure. Roll call. Bill Yes. Bill Yes. Bill Yes. Bill Yes. 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 Bill Georgie? Yes. <coughs> Resolution passed 85. Item 14 is a resolution ratifying intervention and litigation. Ms. Fraley. Um, during August 2003, a complaint was filed um, in the federal court for the District of Columbia uh, against the Secretary of the Interior alleging that the Bureau of Indian Affairs wrongfully recognized the Cherokee Nation election of 2003. <clears throat> the Secretary of Interior, however, has to date recognized the validity of the 2003 election. During the proceedings in the case, the, the Secretary has declined to apprise the District Court of certain core jurisdictional issues and has also held secret settlement negotiations over a lengthy period of time without involving the Cherokee Nation. Um, we should defend the vote of the people, and the Nation should be at the table when our election laws are being debated or being, are, at, are at stake. And I don't think we can... I don't believe the Secretary is an adequate representative of our interests. Moreover, the courts in the past have previously determined that the um, federal government cannot adequately represent an absent tribe, in this case, which Cherokee Nation is, uh, because of competing interests between the two parties. Uh, since the complaint does not name the Cherokee Nation as a party to the suit, and certainly our sovereignty uh, should be protected, I believe it's in the best interest to intervene, and therefore I would move that we ratify intervening in the case and authorize the principal chief to take the necessary action to pursue the intervention. Second. Motion made, second. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, there's currently in our tribal court uh, a request to review uh, the act that allows for retroactive payment. Uh, to law, form, law firms or whomever. Uh, that's an issue that I believe affects the heart of our Constitution and the powers of the people. And I think uh, even though our attorney has recommended that we can make this uh, or, or address this, even though it's in our court, I would prefer to see this played out in our court system to determine whether our retroactive payment uh, to law firms and Melanie, I appreciate the letter you sent me the other day. Do you have an update on the amount of attorney fees that's been spent today? I'm not receiving any other Okay, I think December was 3000 or something. Mr. Hopkins, uh, What's the relevant? what is this got to do with this resolution? The resolution of the intervention? Is that what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. That's because it is, it's being litigated in our court system how we're going to pay, go back and pay these attorney fees. Uh, Mr. President, point of order. I may be wrong, but I believe that Mr. Hoskins is talking about item number 13 or the item 14. I'm no, number, number 14 is what I'm talking about. What attorney fees are 
No, no, not, not, I'm talking about the chief, us approving for the chief to go back and pay the intervention attorney fees that are acting on behalf in D.C. right now. That's what I'm talking about. Is that right? That's right. Okay, all right, I apologize. Okay. If the case you're speaking about is Corn Silk's case, no? That's been denied, so. Well, the whole case has not been denied, to my knowledge, has it? Only the motion to intervene, the motion to set aside this issue. But that's not the case. This here is just a motion to intervene. It has nothing to do with attorney fees. Right. But the motion to intervene will resolve in attorney fees is what I'm talking about. And that will give rise to payment of attorney actions in the past. And so that's the issue I'm concerned about. Ms. Frazier. The Constitution. Ms. Jones. My understanding under the Constitution and statute says that under emergency circumstances, the chief, the principal chief, can go ahead and initiate legal action. And he has 60 to 90 days, 60 days, I believe, to confirm through the council that action to approve any legal fees and signing that contract. So to my knowledge, we are in complete legal compliance with both our Constitution and any statute in taking this action today. Mr. President, it is that issue that's before the court. The act that allows us to give retroactive approval to payments of Cherokee Nation money that I'm concerned about. Oh, that's an injunction. Yes, they asked for an injunction. It was denied. The case is denied. So with that being said, I cannot support this. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, shortly after our Rules Committee meeting on the 17th of February, I received a letter from Ms. Marilyn Vann asking to be allowed to address the full council with some new information concerning this resolution. And I checked with the rules chair. I checked with our attorney. And I also visited with you and was told that she could be allowed to address us. In a technical expertise manner. I don't agree with that because during full council, it has become a practice per our internal rules and procedures for the council that we only as members of this body are allowed to speak unless it's a staff person or a consultant on staff or by contract that's allowed to speak. And this was not on the agenda. And for anyone else that's a tribal citizen, we have required that they be on the agenda and everybody be given 10 days notice that that's going to happen. She's been given opportunity during committee meetings to speak, which is the appropriate place. So at this time, Mr. President, I'm asking that she be allowed to speak to us in the five minutes you agreed to earlier. Well, sir, Ms. Callan is right. She's correct. Our citizens can come down and talk to us and we can ask for technical assistance. Now, if she's going to engage in our debate, she's not allowed to do that. If she's going to come down and rebuke anything that has gone on, she cannot do that, sir. She's not part of our council. I do not engage into a debate with us. I don't think she meant to debate. I don't think that was her purpose. Sir, ma'am, may I ask what you are going to talk about? Well, I wanted to give some historical information regarding some regarding the resolution, some regarding the rights of Cherokee freedmen. Well, I don't think this resolution that we have now is going to affect the freedmen. We haven't done anything now. We just want to get into the litigation. Point of order. Sir. Point of order. The topics that she's discussing about really fall outside of the realm of this particular resolution. 
so and the merits of the resolution. So it's not pertinent to the debate at this time, and anyone would be welcome to submit information in writing, which would become part of public record, and people can, can obtain that. But I do not think that this is the forum or the place uh, for, this, for this person to be speaking. Call for the question. Call for the question. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, no. 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 So call for the question. independent from legal services regularly provided to the Tribal Council. And this legislation um, established procedures for the procurement of those legal services set the limit of $5,000 uh, per fiscal year. And additionally, if a Tribal Council member does not use these attorney fees, then under this legislation, those funds that are not expended can be used in the Council person's district as community assistance. And I would move for approval. Second. Motion made, seconded. Any questions or discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Motion passed. Item number 16 is the resolution. Ms. Yarji, would you present that, please? Thank you, Mr. President. This is the resolution that would authorize the Cultural Resource Center to submit a proposal to the administration for Native Americans that would provide education to teachers in the Cherokee language and develop and print and disseminate materials toward ensuring the survival of the Cherokee language of future generations. It requires a $43,750 in-kind match, and I would put that in the form of a motion. Second. Motion made, seconded. Any questions or discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Motion carried. Item 17 is the Indian Reservation Road. Mr. Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This resolution authorizing Cherokee Nation Indian Reservation Road inventory update for FY. 2005 to update our Indian Reservation Road inventory, include additional road mileage and provision to the, to the construction need system. If there's any questions, uh, I think Michael Lynn is in the audience. I would move for approval. Second. Motion is made, second. Any questions or discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion passed. Any announcements? Ms. Callan. I'd like to introduce my mother, who's in the audience here on Spring Break. Uh, she's a church of tribal citizen, and she's from Claremont originally, but she now lives in Texas. And she's a teacher, especially with learning disabilities, and she's on her second career now teaching in Texas. So thank you, Mom, for being here today. Any other announcements? Any other announcements? I'll give us The next tribal meeting is April the 11th. And Mr. Garvin, let me clarify something first. That was June the 20th, right? That is correct. Okay. 
adjourn. Motion to be made and seconded that the meeting adjourn. All in favor, aye. All opposed, no. Meeting adjourned.